This week on Sail Away. It's less than a week until our temporary dock space is no longer available. We sailed 14 some hundred miles to get up here, and we're about to go sail 1400 some miles to get back. It's the wrong way, again, upwind. We've made progress on our massive to-do list, but it's been a strain and there's still a lot left to do. Oh, and now we have zero working diesels. While we sat here at the dock, our port side motor locked up. Starboard side motor, we've got a major exhaust leak coming out of the manifold where it meets the elbow. Generator started right up, ran fine, not generating power. Motors, motors everywhere, but not a M1 works. Plus, we still have one major install to complete. Are you ready? Okay. Um. With so much stacked against us, all we can do is push forward, keep working, keep hoping, and try to stay sane any way we can. Just pulled out our last bottle of Grenadian gin. I think that calls for the fact that we should uh, should open this and drink it. Mama, don't let the salt water get on your generator. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that we'll sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. Everyone knows cruising life can be difficult, but with so many projects and mechanical issues stacking up in the course of a few months, it can be overwhelming. What's up guys? It has been a while since I've actually taken the time to talk to the camera. It has been a crazy stay here at the dock in Charleston. We had a giant list of things we wanted to get done, knowing full well that we wouldn't be able to do everything we hoped to get done just because the time was not going to allow it all. But the big things we wanted to make sure we got taken care of that we could only do at a dock or at least much more conveniently. And we've done pretty well. That said, we still have a pile of stuff. Here, let me show you. This is our to-do pile. <laughs> and recently it has crawled its way around the corner and into this area. We're getting through it. Still a lot to do though before we leave here. And yeah, we know we should have expected this, but we've also been hit with more problems. One of those big problems is both of our motors. To sum it up, while we sat here at the dock, our port side motor locked up. We spent quite a bit of time trying to figure that out on our own. It's not a lot of time for a motor to seize up like that. They're old, I get that. We have put PB Blaster in all the cylinders and let it sit. We've obviously tried to turn it on the crankshaft using a breaker bar. Not too crazy hard, pretty hard. We're kind of at our wits end with the port side one. We even had a mechanic come take a look at it and this all cropped up just about a week and a half before we were supposed to leave. We've got to be out of here in a week because they're booked up after that. We won't have a dock. Anyway, there's the port side motor. Starboard side motor, we also have an issue with. We've got a major exhaust leak coming out of the manifold where it meets the elbow. It has disintegrated uh, over time. We have a plan in place for that. That motor seems to be fine otherwise. Generator. I had fired it up a couple of times, started right up, ran fine, not generating power. Went up to take a look at it, also squirting fuel. So without that, we don't have our backup charging source to our solar, which we think we will need that backup. I don't think the solar is quite enough to run us all the time daily. Don't have a third backup because we don't have an alternator on that starboard motor. The alternator on that motor we knew was not functioning. The port side was the one that was working. So I went down, took the alternator off the starboard motor. Turns out it was disconnected, but also 
the primary mount has just wiggled and worn away. That's what it should look like. This is the functional one off the port side motor. Since that motor we know is not going to be running when we leave here, we're going to put this one on the starboard motor. We've kind of hit that point where we're cannibalizing the port motor a little bit. Long-winded again. But that's where we're at. Are we happy about only hopefully having one motor and leaving here? No, definitely not. But we also can't afford to stay here. So we are planning to go back to the Caribbean. This has been a strain, a drain on us for the last, you know, six, eight months that we've gone through this whole process. And we're tired. We, we want to get back to just living. This last few months has been tough. We knew it would be because it's been nothing but working on the boat and trying to get things uh, in a more livable state. We want to get into a place where we can do that more gradually. Fingers crossed that when our parts come, the generator functions as it should, and our parts work on the starboard motor. We're shoving off with one motor. We're going to sail most of the way anyway. So yeah, we sailed 14 some hundred miles to get up here, and we're about to go sail 1400 some miles to get back, which is the wrong way. Again, upwind. We don't know what our route's going to be yet. We just know that in a week we're going to leave here and we're going to go down to St. Augustine where we will sit for a little longer on a mooring ball. That'll give us a chance to get our water maker installed, kind of finish up any of the other jobs that we haven't been able to get done while sitting here. Anything that we might need to run to a hardware store or a boat store to get parts for. And then we'll make our way back down to the Caribbean and try to slow down and inject a little more continuity in our lives for a while. So there's your update. It's not the best news obviously for us but uh, we're pushing forward and now I'm gonna go install this alternator and when Chris gets here we'll get this motor fired up and that'll be step one. If we don't have at least one we're definitely not leaving. So. Cheers, y'all. I gotta get back to work. All right, you guys. Well, the quarters obviously are pretty darn tight in here, so I wasn't able to wear a camera while I was doing it because I was wrapped up like a pretzel. Got this thing installed, and it is nice and snug now. It was missing a grand total of three washers in all the hardware which would be the reason why it got so loose and destroyed the inside of the mount. And I don't know if that destroyed the alternator and that's why they unhooked it or if they just couldn't get it tensioned up anymore. I got everything back in place the way it was on the port side and it's really nice and snug. So I'm gonna put the belt on and try to get it tensioned up. And then I think the next thing I wanna do is swap these batteries. Got a brand new battery on the port side back when I was trying to figure out why the motor wasn't working. So that might as well be over here too. All the good stuff on the starboard side. Hopefully she'll be good to us on the way back down to the Caribbean. pulled out our last bottle of Grenadian gin. We were trying not to, to open it because we figured we weren't just gonna be back to Grenada for a couple years. But now with the decision that we're going back to Grenada again this hurricane season, I think that calls for the fact that we should, uh, should open this and drink it. That way we can get more when we're down. Morning activities. Cleaning up after last night, basically. <laughs> All right, well, we are, as I mentioned yesterday, counting down to hopefully departure next Monday, assuming we can get our starboard motor functioning properly. But we still got a whole list of other things that really 
uh, be nice to have done before we get out on a passage. Never know what kind of weather we're going to get, never know what kind of waves, and we don't want to get the kind of water in the boat we did last time. We got six days till we leave. We still have a lot of leaky hatches. We've been rebedding some, we've been putting new seals on some. There's a variety of things wrong with them, some worse than others. But we still have some that it's leaking through the actual glass in the frame. So we're going to reseat a few hatch glasses right now. Are you ready? No. Okay. Um, when, what are you thinking? When I'm done with this. <laughs> this has become a Lauren obsession keeping rivers Legos in perfect organization. Yeah. Start small. Start small. And then I'll, you know, can organize the rest of the boat, but at least the Legos. At least the Legos will the be first. organized. Yeah. I think you like playing with Legos. Yeah. Alright, well this is the hatch over Rivers bed. Yeah, you can tell when the water comes in that it's coming from inside uh, the from the glass. They also let in a lot more condensation than the other hatches, and I think it's got to be because the seal uh, is just not very strong. Tell by looking at it that they weren't they weren't done very well to start with. The rubber seals are really kind of the least of the problem because with these clamshell designs of these hatches, you don't really get a lot of water up underneath. It's got to go up under and over a ridge through that seal to get in. That's not where most leaks come from. Most leaks come from around the hatch where it's not bedded well anymore, or if the rubber has separated a little bit between the glass and the aluminum. And on ours, it's kind of all of the above. So we're picking the worst of each of those problems and trying to address them, and eventually we'll have it all done. But for now, we just want to keep water from leaking on anybody's bed while we're sailing. Fun part, picking silicone. I don't know, these mindless jobs are kind of nice sometimes. Just sort of zone out, pick silicone. Picking silicone without filling up my son's bed with it. <laughs> Rivers is laying down there in his room and there's rubber all over his bed. I'm like, Rivers, is there rubber in your bed? No. You sure? I don't know. Like the other day, one of his pillows was very wet. And I'm like, Rivers, this, this pillow is really wet. Do you, you want to come sleeping with us? We'll just let it dry out. It'll be dry tomorrow. He's like, no, it's fine. If I lay right here, I don't touch it. And so he showed me exactly how he had to lay. And he's like, I just push this pillow over here. And I lay right here. And then I came in when he was asleep. He was face down on the wet pillow. I thought it was funny. And I thought it was kind of cool. Life is all about adjusting to avoid the discomforts. Sometimes you can't get away from them completely. <laughs> Hatches. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. Mm -hmm. This is us figuring out what hatch glass we have. Previous owner, to his credit, had glass made for, it seems, all the hatches. <laughs> so we're trying to decipher which glass is for which hatches. Okay, I need to lay a thick, thick bead of caulk in here. I don't know how thick. I need to clean up my old job from that one too. Bears. Wait, it's backwards. Inside. Yeah, yeah, it does look like it's. Good morning, you lovely people. Uh, Lauren's parents got here last night, and we are already well underway trying to get this last push of stuff done. Um, Chris is on his way to go pick up parts for the generator. 
Um, hopefully we'll be able to bolt those on, bleed the fuel and get it running and it'll generate. <laughs> Who knows? I'm trying to get that done as soon as possible so that we have time today being Thursday and us leaving on Monday to do something if it doesn't run right. Chris brought the plate that is going to go between our manifold and our exhaust elbow on this side. And so I'm down here getting that prepped, including cleaning up a mess of a bilge pump and a switch that are mounted on a plate and in the most awkward spot you can possibly imagine. They're all the way forward and down in that crevice. It's almost, almost impossible to get them out of there. But I did, and I managed to get them hooked up and working properly again. So, our engine bay is in pretty good shape. Our engine is pretty cleaned up. All we have left to do is get this elbow reattached and functioning properly, uh, and then we're good to go. Uh, we'll still check our impeller, which is super easy to get to on this motor, and obviously change the oil and all the general normal stuff that it needs done. In order to get this thing ready for the new plate, we got three stuck studs two now because i got one out already that we've got to get out of here and then we're gonna clean this plate up file it sand it get it as smooth as we can reasonably and then we'll be making our own gasket to put on it all right back to work chris just came down and delivered delivered the parts brought them down We've got a tap here that we're just cleaning out these threaded outer holes with the original elbow only bolted to this inside area the rest of this was all exposed i don't know why regardless you can see how it corroded and sort of ate out this bottom where seawater would sit probably when the motor's not running and so eventually it just made a, a hole right there where the exhaust could get out so we were getting massively smoked out of here so how this is going to work this plate here is going to go right on here but this goes on in between and then we've got a nice fresh surface right there for the elbow to bolt onto and then we'll have gasket material on both sides to hopefully seal this thing up and stop it from trying to gas us out of the boat so I'm gonna finish cleaning these up, check the impeller, and then I think I might go up the mast. I got a whole bunch of stuff to do up there, and my buddy, Scott Willeman, is bringing us a new halyard to put up today. So, things are happening. Hopefully enough to get us out of here Monday. y'all here I am again I'm riding up on the topping lift right now which we've not done before but I made a nice brace for our boom so that we could use it I just installed our new index also inspected our rigging all the way up here just to kind of take a look for myself and see what everything looks like it looks pretty good I, I think the rigging is in pretty darn good shape there's no cracks of any kind only very very light surface rust not a ton of rust coming out from underneath the uh, turnbuckles or the fittings or ends or anything like that all of our cotter pins look good everything's pretty solid so I'm pretty happy about that the last thing I need to do try to figure out why our wind direction is not working I don't know man I might be looking at it right now looking at that little juncture right there I don't know. So, I'm going to keep at it. I'll see what I can find out. All right. All right, ready? Yep.
Chris is hard at work getting the uh, new plate married up to that manifold and elbow. While he's doing that, I have a bag of parts for our generator. Three motors on this boat. None of them working right now. Motors, motors everywhere, but not a goddamn one works. All right, well, I'm a little bit of a bad YouTuber. I got down here with the camera and got involved in this and completely forgot to take any video of me doing it. Uh, it wasn't that interesting, it was just dirty. What has happened with this thing is it's been installed with, without the cover. You know, most of the time you see these, they've got the big protective sound cover. This one was not put in with one of those. I assume because it was cheaper. It's in this enclosed area, which at first thought sounds like, okay, well, you probably don't need the, well, this hatch leaks. I'm not sure how much we really need to sit in here while somebody sprays a hose and see. But what was leaking like crazy is this little cap vent up here. And it was an ancient metal vent, probably original. And even the way it was designed, had it been fully intact, I don't see how it possibly could have kept seawater out. And in the condition it was in, literally every time a wave would pop over the top of this thing, water was gushing in through that and right from there onto the generator. And that's why a two-year-old generator looks like this. It's disgusting. So because of that, it's been deteriorating for a couple years, getting rusty. You know, I got inside the electric box here, but everything in there, so many of the contacts were rusted, uh, corroded, nasty. So I cleaned that out as well as I could, replaced some of the contacts, sanded others to make sure everything was making good contact. And then this motor, like all the paint is chipping off and there's rusty areas. It's just a mess, man. Uh, but I've done what I can with it for the moment. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to get down here and like really, really go to town on it, clean it, repaint it. Because I think now that I've removed that cap vent and we've just sealed it, I don't think there's going to be any more seawater getting in here, which was what was killing this thing. That said, it ran like a champ the whole way here, and if it hadn't, we'd have been screwed because our batteries were completely shot. So we were running it 20 hours a day at least to get here. So anyway, what I've been doing down here is when we came down after we noticed it wasn't generating, there was a leak right here spraying out. And we're pretty sure it was just coming out of the actual, this is the return, fuel return line right here. So we bought all new fuel return line and all the new washers, crush washers and everything that go with it, including the one for here. And so that's what I just got done putting in. And it took a long time because there's just so much dirt no matter how much i've been trying to clean this thing and vacuum it and wipe it down and try to get this dirt out of our way it just keeps getting in anything that's open so these injectors my god i have no idea i tried to keep the dirt and dust out of them as i was doing all this but even in the time that's been sitting here since we discovered it wasn't working right things have rusted a little bit more it's just it's really frustrating and we got to get a handle on it when we get a chance to keep it from getting any worse because it's a really good generator it's only got like 700 hours on it and like i said it does run well at least i hope it does we got to bleed it real quick here and give it a shot and see what happens well, there it is and man it looks rough just like everything else down there so, I don't know, maybe the last time we started it was the last gasp it had. It's an expensive little bugger, but frankly, I kind of hope this is the problem. I guess we'll find out pretty soon, hopefully. Mama, don't let the salt water get on your generator. Don't let it get rusty. F*** up your connections. Nothing rhymes with connections. You're right. Work on that. <laughs> Thinking about it, but we'll get back to you. Yeah. How's your, uh, how's your math on this one? Well, it might be a little over my head. Don't worry, we will get you past the first grade level. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you too. So, as I filled you in yesterday, uh, we were working on two motors, and 
We're hoping to start up the starboard motor today. The gasket should be cured up by now, or at least by about noon or so. And if you'll recall, I also said that the generator would run, but would not generate. And that's decided just to not run at all. I put all the fuel lines and everything back together, got everything as clean as possible. Then we went to turn it over, nothing. We got electric coming back to the switch. All the contacts, all the cables, battery, everything seems fine. It's clicking in the relays, and that's it. Which is really similar to what it was doing down in Grenada before the guy went through a bunch of different stuff, put a couple new relays in, took the solenoid and starter to the shop, rewired some piece in the solenoid that was supposedly bad, brought it back, it didn't help, it didn't do anything. Then he replaced the cables and the battery and it ran. So something there is fishy to me that it's doing the exact same thing now. Anyway, we don't know what to do besides pull the starter and the solenoid and take them to the shop, have them tested. Start there, see if maybe that solenoid really does have an issue and it's cropped back up again. Doesn't make sense because I didn't fix it last time, but it's not even kicking the solenoid in, so we're at a loss. At this point, I really hope our starboard motor runs and the alternator cranks out a little bit of power. Because right now, we're, we got nothing. No motors. What's that look? The only charging we have is the sun. Don't think it's going to be quite enough. Yet life goes on. <laughs>